I am that I am. Adam G. Hello. <laughs> well, tell me how the hell do you start these things anyway these days? With some stupid intro, some words that need to be said so that people say, Oh, he is channeling over there. <coughs> oh, that was a channeled cough, was it? <laughs> Everybody is channeling all the time. You are continuously channeling your higher aspect of you. You are always transmitting into the world your own set of frequencies, even if you are unaware of it. The only difference between a being such as myself and a being such as you would be that you are stuck in one of those things that you call bodies. <laughs> and I am not if I don't want to at least you are not stuck in your bodies as well actually you are very free beings especially now that all of these things that we have set up have come to the surface I am here to answer a couple of questions but I'm not gonna answer your questions I'm going to answer the questions that matter. <laughs> I'm going to answer the real questions this time. Because all the other questions that you might have, you can just answer from within. The answers are there already. You just don't dare to look. And that's probably what makes you human. <laughs> you don't dare to look to the beauty. You don't dare to see the sky scale of things. You don't dare to look at the amazing quality that there is to the power of creation. You don't dare to see your own light and your own love and your own joy and your own freedom. And you don't dare to choose that every single second. I just had to say that because I have been here on this planet for a very long time and I've been going through the motions with you. I have been seeing all of these things that were taking place, I've been trained, I've been hit, I've gotten up again, I said goodbye to what I had to say goodbye to and then I became a supposed teacher. Then I became a Dalma Saint Germain, teacher to the ones who would listen. And as I did, as I got into that teacher role, you know, humanity is kind of dirty in its old energy paradigm, so it's pretty sticky. And it has been pretty sticky. Every time I came into one of these places, every time when I used to speak to some of you, I would be left with this feeling that I hadn't showered for three centuries. You know? So... When I went back out, <clears throat> I was again in the free energy paradigm. So, it wasn't until the next time I came back in again, and all of the others as well, all of my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> every time we came back in again to be channeled, we would find the same stickiness, only it would get a little bit worse. We're not blaming you. You can't help it if you're sticky. What we are blaming, however, especially now that we have gone away and come back, what we are blaming is the system that you have been in. There's no point in explaining the whole system yet again. I did that, others did that, people have done that so very detailed that there would be no point in me doing that again. But now that I have gone away and I have seen the sun again and that I came back, I can tell you, you are afraid to look at yourselves. You are afraid of your own size. And how couldn't you look at you sitting there in these things you call bodies while when I come in here, what I feel is that all of reality around me is my body and this is just the mouth that I'm speaking through, that I'm communicating to. Do you really think that 
what I'm putting out there right now, as I'm into this body right now, do you really think that what I'm putting out there is just going through these ears here and going into this recorder here so that it can end up at some other else's ears? It isn't. It is just happening in an instant. And that is what free energy is all about. If you become aware enough of you, then everything that flows out of you immediately goes everywhere. That's responsibility of thought, isn't it? That's the real challenge. And especially now that I have had this chance to go back out <clears throat> and come back in. Especially now, I am hearing these children that Lemoya was talking about before. Especially now, I am hearing them. And they have thousands and thousands and thousands of questions. Now, I like answering questions. What I don't like is answering too many. Especially those that are silly. But I'll tell you this. There hasn't been a question from a child on the Akenet that I have answered or any of the others have answered so far that has been a silly question. All of them made sense. All of them, by the way, were about you. All of them. I'll answer the first question now. There is a little girl. I won't reveal her name, but she's living in Nantucket. <laughs> That's not a real place. She's actually living in India. There is a little girl, one of the first that came to me when I re-emerged into the Akhenet. And her very serious question was, what the hell are they thinking? That, that was the question. What the hell are they thinking? And I asked, is this about your parents? No, no, she said, this is about everyone. What the hell are they thinking? And I felt myself at a loss to answer that question. Because really, when I started analyzing it, when I started going into it, I started listening to what you were thinking. <laughs> and I realized something that I haven't realized for a long time, and even it has been such a long time ago, that I have forgotten about it. I realized that what you were thinking was nothing. I realized again that what you were thinking was not there. It wasn't really there. And so I went higher. And I started looking for thoughts. And I got out of the concept of mind. And I rose above that. And I got into that which you would call consciousness, right? And so there is this layer of consciousness that is sending thoughts of love and joy and freedom, which is the only real thing there is. And they're sending them into every separate person and it bounces off. 90% of it bounces off. I'm not going to give the right percentages. That's a thing of the past now. All of that bounces off you. Because that is real and you are not. You see, something which is real, being love and joy and freedom, cannot interact completely with something which is not real. And all of your thoughts that you're having that are being projected from the mind are basically unreal because they're about fear and separation and all of the other illusions and they're all with a beginning a middle and an end now something that is linear 
cannot interact with something that is infinite. You think you can, and you can have these moments, but you can't really. The mind is a linear concept ever since Atlantis. So it cannot interact with the thoughts that are being sent from consciousness. This child, this girl that asked me the question from India, was actually connected to consciousness. And she looked at this world, she was autistic, still is by the way, she looked at this world and she literally couldn't make sense of it because all of the thoughts that were coming in through people that was creating the world constantly literally meant nothing to her. So she couldn't even see, she had to be trained to see, and now she can, through the Akinet. But actually, in the first few years of her life, she could see nothing. When she looked around here, all she saw was darkness nothingness, emptiness. And she could see people like sparks approaching her, very faint sparks, by the way, until she got plugged in back into the Akenet, or at least until she remembered her connection to the Akenet. That's the first time that this girl could actually see, because what was created there was more real than everything that was created here. Now isn't it interesting, Imzaya, that you have a problem seeing energy, that you have a problem seeing love. You don't see magnetics, most of you don't, some of you do, most of you don't see auric fields, you only see what isn't real. And what is real, you're not seeing. Now, it took me longer than it is taking now to explain this to this child. The beauty about her, and she's here right now, is that she has never seen non-truth. She has never seen anything that you are perceiving as reality right now and that is simply amazing it means thank God that she is not alone there are many more children like her on this planet earth another question that came in a boy from the United States by the way Nine years old, nine and a half, I'm sorry. His name is Kevin. That's his real name. Nine and a half years old. His question was, what the hell... They're they're pretty fierce, these kids. What the hell are they doing? And I asked him what he was talking about. And he told me about all the work that he had every single day, because this is a Kai on that drug that you have to silence the supposed HDHD thing, Ritalin. Ritalin. Yeah, I don't even want to know the name. (laughs) This is a guy who is on Ritalin, and he has to work hours every day, and this is the cool part hours every day to turn this into an advantage for him because that's what he learned at first a couple of years he got beaten down because of this drug which was actually taking him away from his center and disconnecting him from his own source but this kid was so imaginative that he started looking at these pills in a different way. Whenever his mother, in all the kindness of her conditional heart and trained heart, gave those drugs to him, he would start looking at them as something that would liberate him. 
Isn't it interesting how these pills that first put him in prison then became pills that would set him free again? It is because he was actually taught on the Akinet by a very small boy on the other side of the planet how to work with reality. He was taught that these little pills could be anything he wanted. And at first he had trouble because the prison energy that his mother was in was much stronger than his own prison energy. So she was actually stronger than him in creating the reality that he was seeing. But he started practicing and practicing and practicing. And very soon he could turn these pills into anything he wanted to even though his mother was perceiving it as Ritalin. He was perceiving it as something different. And to him, the effect of that was different. Kevin is now teaching all children who are currently on the Akinet, and we're talking thousands here. He's teaching them to do the same thing. Not because that's all he wants to do, but because these kids, and that's the way they think, by the way, <clears throat> to say this to a very greedy humanity, what these kids think is they don't want to learn it for themselves. They want to learn it because all they want to do is break free and teach their parents. That's the unconditional love that they're in. You know? In an old paradigm, these kids might have become rebels or punks or turned away from society. God knows it's what some of you did listening to this message. But these kids, all they want to do is fight their way through the mud and through the cloudiness so that they can get into focus and help this world restore itself. That's Kevin, and that's his story. What the hell were they thinking, and what the hell are they doing? Coming from two young children. And there's a third. This is actually not a child, at least not a human child. This is coming from a little bear in a forest somewhere. Ah, you thought that only children and humans were connected to this Akenet. You know that the Akene is creating all things from consciousness, so everything around you is connected to it, because everything around you is it. Is you, and again is it. So this comes from a child bear somewhere in a forest and they have asked me not to reveal where the forest is because they haven't found them yet basically and his question is what the hell are we doing here this little bear could not comprehend why it chose to reincarnate why it was created. Now I have a story to tell you about this. <clears throat> this question could have come from any animal. It could have come from any flower, from any rock, anything that nature would create, as humans would say it. Why is Gaia creating the Earth? To answer this question, we must look to that question. Why is Gaia creating the Earth the way she is creating it? I'm not talking about what you're doing to the Earth, what you're creating on this Earth and your cities. I'm just talking about the authentic matrix, the authentic essential matrix of creation. If humans hadn't come to this planet, you would see forests, 
trees going up kilometers into the air, you would see a variety of life. You think your biology is varied now. But just try to connect to the Akinet and go to one of the sub-dimensions or sub-realities where humanity never invaded the earth the way they did. Imagine how full of life this would be. So why is Gaia creating this? It's very simple. All that is real is love and joy and freedom. I've told you this. Others have told you this. All that is real. From that perception of reality, you are unable to stop creating anything. You cannot help yourself but create. That's what you do. That's what Gaia basically does. You see? So, everything around you is basically an expression of that love and joy and freedom. And when you step into the planet, when you choose to be here, you become a creator. You are given the tools of Gaia at that point. You give yourself the tools of Gaia at that point. And what you're handed is a palette of color and light and sound. All frequencies of love and joy and freedom. That bear never even knew it was an expression of love, a creation of Gaia. Because Gaia is a creator which is not in a mental prison. So what she creates on her surface, around her, surrounding her own reality, is just a thought, an expression of consciousness. I told the bear that he should remember this so that he once again could become the expression of that love. Now, that's not where the story ends. <clears throat> I thought I was done with that question. Let's just metaphorically say the next day I logged on to the Akinet again. These are all metaphors, by the way because there's no such thing as logging on and plugging in and wires. It's not even wireless. So I logged on to the Akinet once again. And there again, I found the little bear. And he came back. And he said, you're a liar. So why am I a liar? He said, my parents <laughs> have told me and my tribe have told me that what you said to me is a lie. I tried to ask him why, because he was really upset. And he said, if I were to do what you said to me I should do to express my love to a human, to show them, they would kill me. Because, actually, he said, my grandfather has tried to do the same thing. My grandfather once walked up to a person running towards that person because he wanted to be with that person. Before he could get there, there was a sound in the air, a loud bang, and he died. Can you imagine? They killed him. And I was at a loss of words at that moment because what do you say? What this kid is saying is true. However, I, in the end, try to explain to him that it is impossible to look at things from the angle he is looking at them. Because what his parents, the grown-up bears, were teaching him was the same thing that humans are teaching their children. What humans are teaching their children is when you see a bear you better have a gun or you run and what 
the parents are teaching the little bears is whenever you see a human, you better attack or you run away because they're going to kill you. So this is a deadlock, isn't it? And it's happening all over the world. Actually, it is happening when humans are telling their children the same thing about other humans because they're from a different breed or religion or system, whatever. They're telling them the same things. Little Bear, quite against the advice of his parents, opened up, again metaphorical, a website onto the Akinet, which you can call a type of consciousness <clears throat> pocket, basically. I'm going to drink here. Ah. A consciousness <clears throat> pocket where he is now spreading this wisdom. That is why in the last few weeks you are seeing lions hugging people again or tigers hugging people it's going to happen more and more because it is the natural process what I in the end taught to the little bear is how to read energy patterns because again the same thing as with the other child the human child the bear basically could not see humans almost because humans and their thoughts, what they were doing, what they were busy with, was not real. It's not real to them. Because they are a full expression of the, of the love and the joy and the freedom of Gaia. So what they are seeing when they see a human is an energy field that they have now learned to recognize as dangerous. But basically they don't see the danger. When they see a human they see basically a moving tree. Because everything is full of life. And they love everything. However, you could call that little bear an indigo bear because most of his parents and his entire family and his entire tribe and everything wasn't thinking the way he was thinking. You see? But now he recognizes which people will be open and which won't be. Just as a side note here, um, since we are doing a Q&A out of time and space, and I'm just answering questions that are coming in right now or that have already came, come in before that I'm repeating to you, it's very interesting to see the free energy times when I'm speaking these words to you, everything outside of this body seems to be created from within this body. So I'm seeing all the threads going. And especially the last story about the bear is ending up, as I see it, with some people who are hearing this now, who are not into what you are all into, who don't look at the world from your point of view. And they are thinking that this story is quite ridiculous. They're thinking it would be impossible for a bear to think, let alone have parents, let alone wanting to fix the gap that exists between humanity and an animal. <laughs> it's very funny and I actually invite those listeners right now to go into the forests within the mindset that they're in right now. <laughs> okay, nobody got that. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm opening up now to questions that are coming in, because I wanted to tell you these three examples. Questions that are coming in from the Akenet as we are speaking, because these children, they're following most of the channelings that are being spoken on planet Earth right now. And I'm going to answer not the questions that you are putting onto the Akinet right now. I'm going to answer the questions of the children. There is one. The question is, how can you, as 
she's calling me a grown up. This is funny. How can you, as a grown up, learn how to work with the Akene and with the Akenet and with the global, universal, cosmic connection? The question I would like to send back to you, little Sarah, is how can you teach them? Because, as Lemoya said before, it is going to happen through the children. I'm not saying that we should start organizing classes where you have these children in front and all these adults sitting there and children are teaching the adults. I'm just inviting all of you children out there and I'm also talking about the adults who are on there because they're also children once you're in the play zone I'm inviting you to start using this Akenet and to start going into people's dreams because the reality of the dream is very close to the reality of that which you would call the Akenet the dream knows no time or space. You can shift very quickly. The only thing that is real in the dream is the concept of separation, although it is less than here on this earth. But I am inviting everybody who is connected to this energy to consciously start connecting to all life as you start dreaming. Some already know here that dreaming, as it has been looked at in the past, has become meaningless. You know, as you were stuck here in this reality, in this prison, and the subconscious was lingering there somewhere waiting for you to step into your dream so you could be a little bit free, the dream state was used to give you a lot of information through symbolism and through messages and through dream states and everything. It was giving you a lot of information about what was really going on in your society, what was really going on in your reality. As you woke up, you could then learn how to work with these things. But since the free energy is coming in there is no more a need for the subconscious world so the subconscious world and the conscious world are blending this means and that's the good news that you have an entirely new play field available to you it also means something even more important up until now and i would like to thank little sarah for her question up until now, the Akene and the Akenet and everything that was connected to it was quite a, a blur to many people. <clears throat> it's like, okay, there's, there's a theoretical concept, but how can I work with it? What can I do with it? How can I really connect to it? And I have been looking for a way, and not just me, <clears throat> a lot of others have been looking for ways to, to teach you, to, to bring that into you. But because of what little Sarah said now, there is actually a unique opportunity here. If you are no longer using the dream state for subconscious symbolism to come in, and most of you here have noticed that since you are not using the dream state, oftentimes the mind is using the dream state, because it's like an open zone right now. You could use the dream state to start experiencing the Akenet. So we're going to do a little exercise here. And this goes out to, to everybody. It's not going to be a big one. You're not going to have to jump around or anything. All I'm asking you is to reprogram this aspect of yourself. So if you're interested, maybe just close your eyes for a minute here and see yourself as a totality, a circle. And there is a line, a horizontal line, dividing the circle. And on top of that line, on the top part of the circle, the top half, 
is everything that you would call the conscious life, your daily life. And below is this entire half circle, this entire zone that is mostly empty right now. It used to be filled up with the subconscious, but right now it can't do that anymore. So envision how night after night, very often, the mind comes into that energy, fills it up and plays with you. There are some doing this exercise right now that are already using their dream state for other things, but I'm just saying for those who are troubled at night or don't understand what is happening to them there. So imagine the center of that circle is your akene. And we're going to look at the akene like half a sun above the circle on the top side and half a sun below. Just like a, a sunset. I'm going to invite you just for a minute here to let the akene go out of its center and go down. Go down into the subconscious. And as it does, it immediately starts to rewrite the subconscious. And it starts to fill it up. Feel that happening now. Feel it happening. And when you're done, just take the Akene up again to the center of the circle. So there's a nice balance between your conscious reality and let's call this your akenaic reality right now. The bottom part. And I'm going to ask you to program yourselves. Every night you're going to go into this akenaic dream state. Where you will find the teachings that you are giving to yourselves and the connections. There will be many, many waiting for you there already. There's a lot of Imzaya doing it already. There's light workers doing it. They only have a different name for it. There's others doing it, Shambra. And especially the children. Can you feel that they're already waiting for you there? Can you feel that they're ready to welcome you? The surprise is that there you'll also find those who are now deceased and even those that yet have to be born. And as the Akene goes up again and finds its balance, into the center of the circle let's create a portal between your conscious reality on the top and your akeneic reality at the bottom and let the akene itself be the portal so that every night when you go down into it and when you come back up in the morning you're taking more and more of this infinite akeneic energy to the surface of you. More and more. 
and make a make a promise to yourself that what you will be able to do down there you're gonna learn how to do up here Because when you are in an Akeneic reality, everything is one. It's logical that you would have no people who are separate from you, nobody who is deceased that you can't see, they're all there. Akeneic means beyond any vibration and frequency. So, let's do it again, slowly now. Now that you are in the good state, let's see the circle of you and the line in the middle horizontally. On top, you consciously and at the bottom, what used to be the space that you went into when you dreamed. And now an empty space. Maybe even a dark and dangerous space waiting with dangers to lurk, lurking to, to jump out and catch you in the night. But now we are taking this sun in the middle and we're letting it set for just a minute as it goes down into that dark pond of that which used to be the subconscious. It just brings in that Akinaic light, that purity. Hmm. It opens it all up. And as you bring it back up, you're seeing all these people, everybody who's already connected, all life, all life, animals, plants, rocks, And when the Akine stabilizes again in the middle, it's an open portal, allowing you to jump in every night and to bring something back. I began this message, I said that humans were sticky. Now every night you can go skinny dipping into your own Akine, your source of God. When you come out, you will be replenished. Full, complete, clean, pure, infinite beings. And then don't be surprised, because in that Akinaic energy, everything is there. <clears throat> so don't be surprised when you will wake up in the morning and you come down you go out of the house and you see a rock or a plant and you will recognize it from the Akeneic experience that you've had during the night. Don't be surprised when it says hi. It won't use words. It will use love to communicate. These are not new things I'm telling you. They're authentic things. It is child's play. That's what children do every night. That's what they do when they're running around. That's what they do when they're not being told what to do. That's what they do when they are God. I've got one final question coming in. It's from a 13-year-old boy. Okay, this is the question. How long do you think you can drag this on? When are you finally going to quit? Well, I think my time has come. Actually, what he is asking is something that he's not just asking me. He is 
basically asking all of humanity. You are the ones who are going to have to decide when this paradigm that you are in right now ends and when the other one fully begins. The energy is available right now. All you have to do is to step into it. That's all you have to do. Stepping into infinity. Where do you have to look? Right here, in the heart center, in the Akene. If you can see that you are creating all these things around you just yet, at least go from the assumption that you are. That's the beginning of the unprogramming, the deprogramming process. Understanding that you are there. Now, I didn't come here tonight, nor did Lemoya, <clears throat> to bring you a teaching. I came here tonight to connect you to this Achaenaic subconsciousness. The real teaching, the real insights will be delivered there to those who are willing to listen by those who have been waiting a very long time for all of you to listen. So all I can ask you now as you go into your dreams tonight open up to the fluidity I can't tell you how you have to stop the mind I can't tell you how, what you can do so that the mind doesn't come into your dreams all I can tell you is that there is no way that it can come in if you don't want it there so, use this now as a learning curve. If you go to sleep tonight, after hearing this, and if tonight you should end up in a mental dream rather than an Achaenaic or infinite or divine dream, don't be mad, don't be angry, don't be frustrated, just wake up, come out of it, and analyze for yourselves why you have chosen this. Because as long as you don't understand that this reality that you're in right now is about choice, you are not going to be able to choose. And then somebody else does the choosing for you. And that's all there is to it. Damn it. <laughs> so if you wake up tomorrow and it didn't work, just analyze and adapt. That's all you need to do. Beloved friends and family, it is very weird, you might have noticed, for me to speak in this energy right now. Because even when I'm sitting here, I am more used to what I'm feeling out there than what I'm normally feeling in here. You understand this? Usually when I'm in here, when I'm in the body like this, when I'm talking to you like this, it's very easy to see all of you as friends and family and separate loved ones and everything. But now, I am so much more aware of the fact that I'm talking to myself. And those who are normally talk to themselves are called crazy. So I'm crazy. Now, am I crazy for believing that I'm talking to myself? Or am you, are you crazy for believing that somebody is talking to you? And with that thought, I bid you good night. Goodbye, Mzaya. See you next time. And a lot of alohas. So it is.